Hey y'all, welcome to the Penny Pinching Cramper channel. I'm the Penny Pincher. Uh, do me a favor, get down below, give me a thumbs up. It'd be appreciated. Uh, at the end of the video, if you make it to it, do me a favor and leave a comment. Um, and uh, well, let's just get into it. So, I've sent out several packages, you know, throughout my YouTube time uh, of my projects, the things that I make. Um, and a lot of people get confused um, about what I'm sending. You know, maybe they don't make it to the end of the video. Maybe they didn't catch it. I don't know. You know, that's nor here nor there. But I want to make a video clarifying how to use and what is the stuff that I have sent that might be a little confusing. Some of it's self-explanatory. Some of it's not. So. I'm going to go through several of the products that I have sent in packages to help those out that might be a little bit confused about what they have. So let's get into it. So let me uh, angle you down so you can see things better. I'm having a hard time seeing now. <clears throat> Hold on a second, guys. I'm going to pause you real quick. All right. Sorry about the delay, guys. Um, so the first one I'm going to start off with, and guys, please forgive me if things tend to be a little bit windy. Um, it's been windy every day, and this is just one of those videos I would prefer to do outside. So please bear with the wind. So a lot of you probably got a little little something like this some of them are square some are round some are uh, oval and uh, I know there's a couple of people that are, are waiting on their packages um, they'll be sent out tomorrow by the way um, so but I'm pretty sure almost everybody got one of these uh, not everyone but almost everyone and uh, what this is is a char cloth sparker okay so inside it's got something that looks like a, a converted lighter and that's exactly what it is it's a converted big lighter um you can watch the video if you want to make your own if you think this is a cool project all right but what i did was covered up the top so the sparks didn't come out the top and then opened up the hole where the little vents are on the back so the sparks actually shoot directly out this way and then I wrapped tape around it so if you need to extend your bird nest you can and then in the bottom there's a little cork uh, there we go a little cork and inside that cork you will find a spare spring and some spare flints I also have a video that shows you how to replace the flint on one of these um, I'd watch it it's gonna be very helpful but either which way the flint in it lasts for a super long time okay so all you do is you first get what you're going to use for your your bird's nest. I'm going to use some pine needles, right? Um, especially with pine needles, it's really good to rough them up just a little bit. Just get them a little roughed up, mashed into each other, and all that good stuff. And uh, as you're doing that, you can start forming your bird's nest. As you see, I've got that little hole going and, and everything. And after you get it mashed up a little bit, squeeze the bottom so you got somewhere to hold it. it might be kind of hard to see, but you see I smashed the bottom, leaving the top hole. Gives you a, a little pocket here, okay? Now, I should have probably gotten this out first. So, I don't know if I said it or not, but there'll be a little packet of char cloth in each one of these two. That's what this little 
little thing is is a packet of char cloth all right now the best way I've seen to do this to, to, to assure that you actually get a fire going you actually take a couple pieces of char cloth and go ahead and put it down in your bird's nest. This will extend how long and how hot your original ember will be. So, just put a couple pieces in there. Alright, so now, depending on how, how well you make your char cloth, sometimes char cloth can be better sometimes than others. Um, so if it doesn't start one way, it'll start another way. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean here in a second. Just trying to get a, another piece of char cloth up. Hard to do everything one-handed, isn't it? Okay, so with the same hand you're pinching, you wanna grab your char cloth, right? And then you'll take your sparker. Now, if you got really good uh, char cloth, you should be able to just press it up against, hold and spark. If it's a little bit of a weak char cloth, you wanna take it to a ragged edge and actually slip it in to the hole like that, all right? And then strike it like you would a normal lighter. Then once you got it going, you just easy start blowing it in. until you get a flame and there you go and then you can take that and either extend it with some uh, you know have a, a little bit of the tape from around the edge here already ripped up and, and ready to add to that to extend it or you can use you know any other technique that you would want to use for a fire so that's the char cloth sparker this is to replace your flint and steel um, Flint and steel is kind of a, a technique that's, you know, a little tricky to learn. You know, it's not something you're just going to pick up and, and, and do off the bat. Um, it's also hard to do in cold weather when your hands start, you know, getting stiff and you're, you know, just to get the stick. Ah, can't ever say that word. Starts, you know, getting to where you can't use your fingers so well. So that's the char cloth sparker. Um, another thing I've sent out, and I'm sure by now most people have figured out how to use one of these, um, but I just want to point a few things out. Um, these rubber bands are placed in a certain way so that it actually creates a, a belt loop. All right, so you can wear this on your hip. So if you've ever gotten one of these, pay attention that two of the rubber bands on the bottom side go all the way around. The one on the inside misses, it does not go over the first part of this little band here, okay? But, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get this out because for a lot of the other projects that I want to show, I'm going to need one of these. See, so you actually just leave that rubber band on like that. So, and then you unscrew the top, you pop it out, you turn it around, put the cap back on, and screw it down, and it secures the ferro rod. Has a striker right on it, and then of course you got all this paracord now. Some of them I've done tricky things with that are kind of cool, like using survival cord in it, and then adding some needles, fishing hooks, weights, swivels, all of that into the braids, um, so that they're they're hidden, but they're there. Um, so, anyways, moving on to the next. So. Uh, 
Yep, we, we work. Um, I have made a new one. All right, and this is the only one I've ever made, and this is actually gonna go to Little Lone Prepper, so I just wanna show this to her real quick while we're in this. All right, this one is not collapsible. It's got a smaller handle on it. Um, when you take the rubber bands off, you still got your striker, of course, that you, know, you can't lose, but it's designed a little bit different. Here at the cap, you'll notice that it, it has an indention right here, all right? That's for the string to go in and make sure that when you have this closed up, there's no way that this cap right here will come off, okay? Um, because inside of it is some tender, and I call these my fire twigs. I have a video on them. You can check them out. I also have a video on how to make the collapsible ferro rod. But what these are, are like birthday candle substitutes, all right? They're not like your normal jute twine. They're made with beeswax, and so they're super stiff, and they burn a little bit longer than what your normal jute twine would. And, uh, you know, they stay like little sticks, and that's, that's why I call them my fire twigs, all right? Um, those are inside. So you have a way to start a fire all in one, okay? I'm gonna put that off to the side. I'm not gonna use that because it doesn't belong to me. I just wanted to show it. <laughs> uh, so they knew how to use it. Little lone prepper, all for you. Okay, so the fire twigs, all right? Fire twigs have come in many different shapes and forms. Some of them will come in little black, uh, uh, gorilla tape packets that I made that you know the little lid came off and they were down inside some of them came in tubes uh, some people didn't get any at all but anyways what makes the fire stick kind of cool other than the fact that uh, you know it, it's like a, a birthday candle replacement and you can actually get like four of these three three to four of these per one birthday candle and if you used all four of them, you would get more burn time out of it than you would a birthday candle. Um, and the other thing about these is you can start these with one of those. You can't do that with a birthday candle. So two different ways to use it. One way you can just kind of rough up the end a little bit. All right, just fan it out. And uh, sometimes it helps to take a knife and kind of just rough it up a little bit. All right. And this is if you want to use it like in a birthday candle or match form. All right. Bend it up just a little bit. Pinch, pinch your ferro rod right down on top of it and, and stick those feathers that you, you know, that part that you roughed up right out in front of it. Give a little bit of peppering on it, which just means to scrape a little bit of your ferro rod off without it sparking. Yep. Hard doing this upside down. Or it could just be the wind. Let's rough it up a little bit more, all right? Let's uh let's actually retry that. I think I just uh didn't do my good job of roughing it up enough. Usually these things are actually pretty easy to start, believe it or not. So we'll get that roughed up there there it is pinch it back down there we go oh had it for a second there we go Well, if this ain't just being a butt on me today. 
All right, one more try, guys. One more. One more try. Um, if you actually watch the original video, you'll see how much more easier this really is. I think part of it's the wind. Yeah, see, the wind just blew it out. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to have lots of problems because of the wind. Um, you probably didn't see it light up there for a second. But the other thing you can do with these, because yeah, it's, it's literally like a match or a birthday candle, you know, it's not going to take a lot of wind. They're not trick candles, but if you don't have this type of wind that I've got today, uh, it's pretty simple. The other thing you can do is actually unravel it quite a bit. All right Which will give a really big top and uh, it's not as easy to do when you shorten them up like they are inside of that other other uh, The other Ferro rod that I, I showed you just a little bit ago easier to do with these larger ones as you can see but uh, the winds gonna end up blowing it out again I'm sure but now you can just you know go and light it like you would with a match or a birthday candle so you wind blew it out or you can tear it all apart completely apart and make a big ball out of it like you would if it was just a regular piece of tender all right instead of being fancy with a match or whatever but you can just rip it all up and I'm not gonna rip it up as well as I normally would I'm just trying to give you an idea and then you can kind of make it into a little jumbled mess like that and uh, Man, this wind is killer on these things. So, uh, well, little note, even though they work great, they only work great when the wind is low. <laughs> uh, which is just killing me. I'm spending way more time on these than I should be. There we go. Anyways, that gives you an idea. Okay, the next thing that you guys might have gotten is going to be a little tube like this. Um, and inside of them are going to be several of these little guys, okay? And they're called my fire button, all right? And uh, basically what it is is petroleum jelly and um, cotton balls, but um, made in a different way. Have a video on these two. Like I said, call them the cotton button. Look them up if you like them, want to make them. But uh, what makes these so great is everybody loves petroleum jelly and cotton, but the stuff is messy. It's hard to keep. Um, you know, you usually have to put it in a little medicine bottle and then you gotta go in there with your finger and scoop it out and you get Vaseline all over, accidents happen. Um, you know, like I've said several times before, I've had a couple of friends almost, you know, catch themselves on fire because of the Vaseline being so messy and with these it takes that messiness away as you can see I, I have barely any Vaseline on my hands boom it's gone all right and these things work really good like any other Vaseline and cotton ball would Alright, so just, you know, lights up like any other one goes, and there you go, another fire tender. Uh, put that off to the side. So, another one, alright, are these little things. They, they came in tin foil, and uh, the way they work, alright, some of them are yellow, which are beeswax. Those would be called my extreme weather fire tender. Um, have a video on those uh, some of them are paraffin wax like I believe this one is yes and 
even though they still work really, really great, they're still waterproof, but I wouldn't call them extreme weather uh, for several different reasons, and it is all explained in the video below, or the, not below, but the video uh, that you can look up, like I said, uh, I believe it's extreme weather fire tender. So with these, what you want to do is you actually want to cut the end. Now, if you don't have a knife, it's no big deal. You don't have to cut the end. Um, and uh, the other thing is, is I always recommend the beeswax over the paraffin wax because the beeswax performs like it should. Like when, if you notice when I went to cut that, it kind of like split and broke up and, and shaved off. So then once you broke into the middle, there's some cotton in there and you just kind of want to rough it out, have it sticking off the side and you want to put it on the tin foil. This is going to extend the life of it. This is going to make these things push up to between 10 and 15 minutes of burn time and they're not that big. Um, so, and the other thing is, is once you have it lit on the tin foil, then you can move it to where you want. You can build your fire all up light it off to the side, light this off to the side, and then carry and push it in. Uh, trying to do this when the wind's picking up again. I just didn't fluff it enough, which is one of my biggest habits. Uh, I get rushed in these videos and I don't tend to fluff stuff enough. There we go. There's some good fluff. All right. So there's that one. And that will eventually turn into like a, a giant wicked candle it'll burn really hot really high really fast or not really fast sorry uh, really really high flame really hot and for quite a long time as you will see in due time um, if you stick by me for this video um, so the other one that's a lot like that that I don't think anybody's gotten yet but will be getting soon are these little guys all right and it's almost like the same thing these are actually beeslax like they're they should have that one should have been but uh, they still work good they still work great they're just not as good as when they're made with the beeswax um, but you'll notice on these it's got two strike wear anywhere matches that have actually been dipped in wax and you just just you know make your little cup like I did for that one all right Ooh, trying to blow off on me and then put your fingers at the bottom of it and your thumbs at the top and kind of push down against the mash or match sticks until this smushes out a little bit and you're able to open it up and expose the cotton, all right? Then you should kind of just take your finger, run it across the end of the match a little bit to get any extra wax on it and then it should just be as easy as well, it should be, but not today. But anyways, it's got some matches on it. Um, I think this is just a little too wet. It sat out all night and absorbed water. But, uh, and then once it's lit up, go ahead and stick it on its piece of tin foil. Let it do its thing. Um, if you want to watch the video or the short on that one, that's the... Um, I believe I called it light anywhere fire tender uh, and you'll see how it worked better out when it wasn't so windy outside in fact this one's not even working very good at all and you'll see in the other ones it works great <laughs> um, maybe holding it up a little bit till the cotton actually gets lit uh, I think I did mention that before that that can really help because once the cotton's lit these will not blow out they're completely windproof once the cotton is caught uh, if the stick is still burning it's like a match it can easily blow out in the wind um, 
So something to keep in mind with those. If you're starting those, you want to have a controlled area to where there's not a lot of wind. And, you know, like with a little shield or wait for the breeze to come down or something like that. Because uh, if you don't, uh, the strike anywhere part will just end up failing and you'll have to resort to this or something else. Um, another one I have, um, I call this the afterburner. I have sent a few of these out. I will be sending a couple out. Um, I'm not actually going to demonstrate this one. You guys can go and see the video, but I will explain how to use it. There is some cotton underneath this yellow wax. Split it open, expose the cotton, pull it out, fluff it out, just like you did with, you know, this guy over here. All right, fluff it out, and then you can either use a lighter, a match to light it. Um, these are going to burn in, in a good downpour. Uh, you know, it's, it's basically a flare. Um, well, actually, it is a flare, but have a, a video on these two they're called the uh, the afterburner um, so you can go and see about those but these things are expensive to make um, <laughs> so I'm gonna not burn that guy um, another thing sometimes you'll find these in here it's hand sanitizer and I'm not calling anyone stupid, but just in case nobody knew, the hand sanitizer is flammable. You can add it to anything to catch it on fire with a, a spark very easily. Um, so I just want to point that out. Not calling anybody stupid, but just in case there's some newbies out there or something like that, you know. That darn wind. Um, so this is called my fire, uh, my fat putty. Um, it's based off of fire putty, but this is homemade, made it myself and stuff works pretty good too. Um, like anything else, it can be a little hard to start in the wind, but once it gets going, it gets going. So this stuff here, you can just take it out, make sure you have some exposed fibers on the inside. Um, there is fat wood shavings in this and when I say shavings I mean like really fine shavings uh, so if you you know open it up make sure that you see you know it looks like little little things are sticking out right and then once again just take your ferro rod get it right up in there close give it some pepper in some scrapings on there. And yeah, of course. During the peppering, it was good. As soon as I go to strike, the wind wants to pick up. One of those days, I should not have made the video today, but I've been dying to get it out. Uh. All right, hold on. Let me do what I'm supposed to do here. Expose those little fibers really good. Get some pepper in on it and let's wait for the wind to die down. That could be my problem. My hands are starting to get a little slick. See what happens when you get impatient. Almost every one of these I've shown you, I've gotten impatient on. 
and it showed you what not to do and then what to do um, guys that's that's not everything that has ended up in packages but this is the stuff that I find most people seem to get a little bit confused about sorry about the length of the video sorry about the wind um, I just wanted you guys to have something all put together for you know these these questions that I end up getting asked um, and have no way to really explain it in text um, so there it is laid out for everybody um, hope you enjoyed watching me goof up over and over again um, <laughs> now one thing I want to point out is this one's still burning this is what I mean like see the flame on that thing those those extreme weather or extreme weather fire tenders are really something else they really are um, you can't beat them so anyways guys that's the end of the video if you made it to this please leave me a comment down below um, consider giving me a thumbs up and remember God's good and God bless.